Andrea Soreo. In an effort to fight crime in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, the Sheriff's Department has increased the hours of deputies and volunteer deputies. Since July 1st, residential burglaries have dropped up to 50 percent. Mayor Anthony Mizetich sits down with Liz Brown Swanson and tells us more. Uh, when we've passed the budget, we also included provisions where we increased the number of hours where our Sheriff's Department is in our city. And uh, that was a plan that uh, Councilwoman Brooks and I on the Regional Law Subcommittee worked on with city staff. The council endorsed it and we approved it. That increased the man hours of the sheriff, Sheriff's Department between active sheriff deputies and sheriff volunteer deputies another 2,885 hours wow. in our city. What that has done, and now that was effective July 1st, since July 1st, I've gotten figures back from Captain Bolin in the Lamina Sheriff's Department where uh, crimes like residential burglaries right, and, which is and really other the burglaries. Right, which is really the thing that people are most thinking about. Right, is right. The burglary and that's been scene. the biggest concern of the council. Those crimes have, are, are decreasing. The figure is 50%. Right, I thought I, I heard, heard you mention 50%. that. That's huge. That, that is huge. That's residential burglaries. It's, it's decreasing 50%. Other burglaries, 14%. Larcenies, 25%. And vandalism, 33%. That's since July 1st, since we implemented these new programs. Now, we're not going to just sit on our laurels and say, oh, you know, pat ourselves on the back and what? say we're, we're satisfied with that. We're going to keep working with the Sheriff's Department to make sure that we keep our citizens safe and, and property protected. And you can see more with our mayor on RPV City Talk, which airs nightly at 9 p.m. And sad news to report, former mayor Tom Hollingsworth has died. He was 79 years old. Hollingsworth served on the RPV City Council from 1995 to 1999. Current Mayor Anthony Mizicic said Tom Hollingsworth was very well liked and he was an inspiration to many people in the way he conducted himself. He was a gentleman. Tom also left his mark permanently on the city of Rancho Palos Verdes when he designed the now familiar blue, white, and green city logo. Our condolences go out to his family and friends. There will be a special remembrance for the former mayor at the October 2nd City Council meeting. Car enthusiasts gathered at Trump National Golf Club to celebrate their love for the most prestigious cars on the planet. It's an annual event that brings out our residents in droves.
And it was a sight to see over Southern California as the Space Shuttle Endeavour took its final journey to its new home. The Shuttle Endeavour was flown on top of a 747 and many residents right here in Rancho Palos Verdes had a chance to see the flight. Residents living in Seaview reported the shuttle flew so low over their homes it looked like it was going to land in Rolling Hills. The shuttle landed in Los Angeles where it will be on display for all to see at the California Science Center. And when we come back, some local women make history at the California Women's Conference. And he may be in high school, but this student is ahead of the race. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Hi, I'm Judy Shepard Missit, founder and CEO of Jazzercise. Join us for Jazz Cardio Strength Stretch. Each half hour program combines cardio, strength, and stretch routines for a total body workout and tips on health, nutrition, or exercise. Thousands of people have tuned in to Jazz Cardio Strength Stretch, and we hope you will too. And history was in the making at the California Women's Conference. Thousands of women, including many from the peninsula, gathered at the annual event in Long Beach. The conference focused on the influence women have on the economy. It's estimated that women are responsible for 85% of all consumer purchases from autos to health care. Liz Brown Swanson attended the event and brings us more. Liz. That's right, Maria. Believe it or not, statistics are showing that women are spending nearly $5 trillion annually. And I know from some of our shopping sprees, Maria, we account for some of that. But the theme here at this two-day women's conference is that the women's economy starts here. Let's check it out. The theme this year is the women's economy starts here. The conference is bringing on the history of 27 years of the California Women's Conference. It is no longer affiliated with the governor's office, so this is done by a private entity, and that entity is event complete. And we are making history by bringing back the California Women's Conference this year. We had more than 150 speakers, which has never been done before, under one roof over two days. My name is Liz Griggs, and I'm the general manager at the Promenade on the Peninsula. It was important for me to come here because because it's a time where women get to support women in their efforts and what we're trying to do in our lives. And um, there's just so many powerful women here in, in our own ways. Women are powerful because we're mothers, we're teachers, we're employees, we're leaders in our community. And I think that working together with other women and being able to share ideas on how to remain positive and uh, ideas and taking different approaches and how to do things more efficiently and effectively and maybe looking at things differently than maybe how we do it normally and um, they've had some great speakers here and it's just a good reminder that in our own way we make a difference in people's lives. Well, I've been in business for over 25 years. I'm a serial entrepreneur. Um, I started my business where we designed glass artwork. They all a symbol of breaking the glass ceiling and got them on a many prominent women around the country and the pins have been featured in the Smithsonian. Um, but that's one of my businesses and then I started a consulting firm. This conference here is a great way to introduce women to small business as well as the women business owners that are here help them to get resources and grow their businesses. This book uh, really grew out of our love of entrepreneurship. Patty's an entrepreneur and I'm a former entrepreneur educator and so it, when we came together for our, our love of entrepreneurship and working with women and wanting to empower and inspire them with the life lessons of successful women. Many of the women in the book are entrepreneurs or the head of nonprofit organizations like the CEO of Habitat for Humanity or Linda Loray, who was an executive with Giorgio or the CEO of Fredericks of Hollywood. Uh, we have philanthropists and um, social entrepreneurs, business women, Tracy Austin. Here you are, Terranair is one of the sponsors of the Women's Conference. How is it going, Gay? 
Well, we're very excited to be here. It's our first time to sponsor such a large event in Long Beach. So it's all new and we're looking forward to learning as we go, but we've already had a great response. People are coming up and saying they know us or they've heard of us and they want to come see us. So we're here representing the spa essentially today because it's the perfect medium for women. This is about how do we collaborate and pull together and work together. We are what? We are better together. Woo! Certainly this two-day women's conference has been incredibly empowering and while it has been here for two days, organizers say this is something that will carry on with women 365 days a year. Back to you in the studio, Maria. With Botox use on the rise, many people use the outpatient procedure without getting the proper information they may need. Dr. Edgar Fincher gives us more information in this week's Health Beat. Botox um, actually works on the muscles. Okay. So we call them muscles of facial expression. So the muscles used when you smile, okay. when you raise your eyebrows, when you squint. Um, <clears throat> and it can actually uh, chemically weaken those muscles is, is essentially the way it works. Um, as we use these, these muscles over and over thousands of times a day, what happens is you're really compressing the skin, overlying the muscle. And over time, what happens in that, in that compression area is, is you form a line, mm -hmm. you form a wrinkle. Okay. Um, so what the Botox will do is, uh, it's, a, it's a simple injection in the skin. Okay. The chemical itself actually gets into the, the nerve endings that control that muscle, weakens the muscle, relaxes that muscle, so you're not really forcefully creating that line again. I mean, I think the, the overall goal should always be to, to enhance one's natural self okay. and not to overdo it. So I think these procedures are straightforward. I think they're simple. Um, there are always potential complications with anything. They're injections, so right. obviously the needles need to be placed in appropriate places. With, a, with the Botox injections, they're really, as we said before, very straightforward injections straight into the muscle. So it's just a series of small injections. It could be four injections or across the forehead, maybe it's 10. Okay. Um, I usually have my patients ice afterwards okay. just to minimize any swelling at the injection points and prevent any bruising. Um, there's no bandaging, okay. so there's no bandages that we use, but we do ask that people refrain from um, you know, strenuous exercise or lying down for a period of several hours just because we don't want the, the substance, the liquid there that we've injected to migrate to other places. We really want it to stay right where we've injected it. Sometimes there's bumps. There'll be little tiny bumps because it, it is a liquid, a solution that we, we inject in there and you get a tiny bit of swelling just from the, the puncture, but that really dissipates and goes away in probably a matter of, of an hour, especially with some ice afterwards. Best thing to remember is, is um, to avoid any blood thinners or uh, mm -hmm. aspirin or ibuprofen, um, you know, any medical blood thinners, these types of things before because it just increases your chance of maybe getting a little bruise at the injection site. And remember, it's always recommended to consult with a medical doctor before having any cosmetic procedures. The Terranea Resort received an award from the South Bay Business Environmental Coalition for going above and beyond to stay environmentally friendly. Mark J. Dotti tells us more in this week's Green Beat. From the beginning, Terranea Resort understood the importance of maintaining the environment. Their efforts were acknowledged at the South Bay Business Environmental Coalition's SEED Award Ceremony, which took place in the Redondo Beach Performing Arts Center. Many city officials and staff were there to support Terranea. We are so pleased that Terranea won this award, the South Bay Environmental Excellence Development Award, uh, SEED Award. They um, won it in the category of pollution prevention. They are an excellent partner with the city uh, and they are an environmental steward and uh, want to do their best to be a good partner for, with our city and for um, California. And they're good friends of the environment. It's a great honor for them to have the SEED Award and they, greatly re, re, they, they really deserve it. Terranea originally started off uh, with a project uh, um, called Long Point. It went through a lot of uh, maturations. Uh, there were certain elements to it that the community didn't care for. They wanted to use a public park at the upper point for Seni. Anyway, it eventually evolved into uh, the Terranea project. Um, and in the process of that, I've been talking to uh, Bob Lowe, trying to guide his uh, project into more of a environmentally friendly, sustainable project. 
got involved with Todd Major in the landscaping uh, aspect, uh, encouraged the use of bioswales and uh, uh, water quality improvement projects and low uh, water drought tolerant plants, which are native plants for the area. I think um, you know our the, both the Low family and our development team acknowledged from the onset that uh, you know the site that Terranea sits on was a very special place. Uh, 102 acres bound on three sides by the ocean. Uh, to the north, we had the uh, the NCCP, the, the, pres the preservation uh, land with the coastal sage scrub, uh, great right. habitat for gnat catcher and whatnot. So we, we, we understood the, the sensitivities of, of, of developing the land, and I think we also understood that we had one chance to get it right. Uh, and, and whatever we uh, ultimately built, it had to be uh, contextually sensitive. Uh, one would be the, the uh, 14 acres of native habitat that ring uh, the exterior of the site. Uh, it, the, the plant material was grown by the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy. Uh, our biologists have uh, seen the El Segundo blue butterfly, uh, seen gnat catchers, so we know the success, the, the success of that habitat. The stormwater management plan is, is by far one of the most state-of-art, uh, state-of-the-art systems uh, for sure in the South Bay, if not uh, Los Angeles County. 75% uh, of, of, of all water that flows through, through, through Terranea is, is treated before it hits the ocean. This is the type of project the city should be looking toward, is a, is a, um, a partnership with private business for this kind of project that is good for the community, not only for, in terms of financial business, but in terms of the environment and sustainability of the communities themselves. So this is a great example of that that should be a model for other cities to follow. Move over, banana bread. Tanya Rush shows us how to make a quick and easy apricot bran bread that everyone will love. Now, some of you may be saying, Apricot bran bread? I'm not sure about that, but don't judge before you actually try. This is a very delicious, healthy bread with a subtle taste of the apricots, and you can't even tell the bran is in there. So see, you can eat good and enjoy a good piece of bread, get a lot of fiber at the same time. Now, I've been cooking up this bread for a really long time and even liked it as a young girl. Kids like this, so that's good. And actually, this is one of my first recipes I learned in my foods class in high school out of... Thermopolis, Wyoming. Now to start, of course, you need to heat your oven to 350 degrees, and here's what you need. You actually need to um, snip some dried apricots, as I have here. You want to pour boiling water over these, and you want to let those, just set those to the side as we get, we have to prepare a few other things. Now the next thing that you want to, to do is actually you're going to take um, some egg, and you're going to mix that together with some milk. And we want to soak our bran, and this is about a cup cup and a half of bran and it's bran cereal. You can use any kind that you like. Let's go ahead and mix that together just until moist and we'll also set that to the side. It's kind of a three-part thing here but it's so easy. Have your kids help you. This is also a fun activity for the weekend. Also a great snack for the kiddos and for the entire family for that matter. Okay we're done with that part. Then the other part we need to get ready here of course is all of the dried ingredients and you want to put those all together and stir them up so it's all consistent there. All right, now because the magic of tea, we'll pretend that time has passed. You want to make sure that at least these apricots sit for about 10 minutes. You want to drain off the excess water as so, like that. Nice and, nice and good there. Put that back in. Also, we're going to sprinkle these little guys with a little, little, just a little bit of sugar. Okay, and we'll toss that to coat as so. We'll do that quickly here. There we go. Okay, now that that's ready, we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually pour this into the mixture. I like to do it in this order, not quite as messy. And if you've been following me with Meals in a Rush, you know I can make quite the mess as a chef. So we'll coat those as is, and then we're going to add the bran mixture. And uh, once this, you know, you set this to the side, you want it to get nice and soft here. So we're going to go ahead and pour that in. Voila. You know how the kids in the kitchen, they love to mix, so the more bowls you have and the more things you can put in and have them a part of it makes it for a fun time for the entire family. We're going to mix this all together until it's nice and coated. 
and you're going to notice that it is a thicker type of a consistency with this bread. And don't let that worry you because that's actually what, what you're going to need with this. And it cooks up so perfectly. I just love the consistency of this. So we're going to pretend that this is actually all done. We're going to set this to the side. And you want to make sure, also, oh, another secret here, when you're measuring out dried products, always use a measure device like this. Don't use the kind that you do the liquid in. Always sift your flour. A lot of people forget that stuff and it does actually make a huge difference. So don't forget to do that. All right, you're going to grease your 9 by 5 loaf pan, as so. And you would pour this, of course, into that, and you're going to bake this bread for probably about an hour. And with this bread, what I, like to, what I like to do is the old technique of once it gets closer to the time being done, take it a little bit out of the oven. We don't want you to burn yourself, and kind of do that, that, that press on top, press lightly, and if it springs back and doesn't feel gooey, as I like to say, then you know that it's done. And there you have it. Look at this. And once it comes out of the oven, I like to sprinkle a little extra sugar on top. Gives it a little bit of a sweet touch. And if you look at this, it's just a beautiful color. You want to bake till it's light, a light brown like this. And let me tell you, it's so good if you warm it up, of course, and you put a little bit of margarine on it, especially with fall in the air and it getting a little bit crisper outside. Um, it makes for the perfect treat. So there you have it, an easy and delicious apricot bran bread. So you go out and enjoy the meals in a rush way. And I'm going to eat now, my favorite part of all of this. Thanks, Tanya. And now it's time for John Clayton, who gives us a sneak peek into some of the most extravagant and unique homes on the peninsula. The homeowners will open their doors to the public on Sunday, October 14th to raise money for the White Point Nature Preserve.
And when we come back, are you ready for a hike in the moonlight? And in sports, a local panther gets to the finish line first. When you're driving, distractions can cause injury and death. Drivers who text while operating a vehicle are 23 times more likely to cause an accident. In 2009, over 25,000 tickets were written for cell phone violations. Remember, in the state of California, talking on a phone without a hands-free device is against the law. Loud music is also distracting. When you drive, keep your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel. There are three main types of distractions. Visual, taking your eyes off the road. Manual, taking your hands off the wheel and cognitive, taking your mind off what you're doing. Keep your eyes on the road and we all stay safe. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you're a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. And in sports, I had a chance to catch up with Steven Sansome, a Peninsula High senior who started off playing football, but found out that cross-country running was more his style. So much so, he recently won a 5K race across the Vincent Thomas Bridge. It was like a little over five miles, so just started out with a couple guys, you know, like maybe like 10 guys in the top, you know. And then so we got on the bridge and people just started falling off every, every couple miles. So the last mile was just me and Cohen, who's going to Oregon next year. And, um, and then it was just... You know, I passed him on the downhill, and then it was just me till the end. Okay, now it was 2,500 people, so, you know, you're you're going toward the home stretch there, and there's no one in front of you. What was that like? You know, that felt pretty good, but it was like, you know, you could see the finish line the whole time, so it just felt like it was getting farther away, you know, because uh, you were just focusing on that. Of course. Yeah, yeah now, but it felt good, you know. It took uh, some of the pressure off. Did you always want to run, and, and why did you pick cross country? You know, I didn't always run. I ran. I played football okay. when, I, when I started freshman year. And I was a receiver and, you know, uh, a cornerback and everything. But we had a weekly mile we mm -hmm. had to run. Right. And, you know, I'd always win by, like, you know, a lot because, you know, they're all football players, you know. <laughs> and so somebody told me, my coaches told me to go out for track. And so I went out for long distance track. And one of my good friends, uh, Brennan McGaff, was in uh, track. And, you know, he just really got me into running and, like, you know, our football team wasn't that great anyway, so. Yeah. Now, I know that, you know, once you're a senior now, once this is over, you'll go into college, you know, do you want to run in college? What's the what's the biggest difference between running in high school and college? Well, you know, I, I really want to run in college, and I know the, the uh, intensity really increases, the mileage, you know, you get kicked up to 100 miles a week in college. Wow. And they really, they really focus on base. And the training's, you know, a lot better, a lot harder than high school because, you know, you just, um, you're running for the team, you know, you're getting paid to run for a team, you know, so they really expect more out of you, so they train you harder, you know, they work you. And finally, who says the sun has to be out to take a hike? The RPV Parks and Rec Department invites you to come explore the Palos Verdes Nature Preserve at night. On these moderate hikes, park rangers lead you through the Portuguese Bend Preserve by moonlight. Participants must be at least seven years of age, and anyone under 18 must be accompanied by an adult. So grab a jacket, flashlight, and some water, and gear up to have some fun while learning about our environment. The first hike will take place on Saturday, November 17th at 7 p.m. For more information, you can go to the website at www.palosverdes.com rpv. And that will do it for today's show. For everyone here at RPV-TV, make it a great day.